Got it. Hello, I'm here today with Susuma Kimura, and we are talking about his film Submitting and some of the aspects that have come in together. Now, we first met when we were down at Film Quest, where your film was being screened. And mm -hmm. it had, I think, a really good screening there. A lot of people in the audience and what I talked to out there had a lot of insight of how they felt about it. It really developed a lot of emotion. So I'm going to ask, first of all, if you would, give us a brief description of how you would describe uh, submitting to somebody that hasn't seen it yet. So Submitten is in a short word, I would say dystopian sci-fi short film, uh, but on the sort of a story uh, synopsis, I'd say it's a story about a single mom um, who lives in this uh, independent city in the future. And uh, this city has a very um, dark uh, secret about it, um, which we will reveal in the film. Um, and she's in lives in the poor area of the city and she wants to survive. Um, so she takes a job of designing a poster. Um, but um, the poster is sort of a propaganda and, and she's uh, faced with the uh, problem of whether she's going to continue with this sort of dark theme that's going on in the city or she decides to take up a stand against it. Okay. Now when we were watching, it was clear that there was uh, some really heavy Japanese cultural influences. Mm -hmm. Are you drawing off from any particular cultural influence that you have experienced or seen around? Or Yeah, there's a lot of like different uh, things about it. Uh, Japanese, um, also uh, the Japanese Americans, what happened with Japanese American in World War II in the United States with the internment camp. And I uh, definitely want to make a reference to that. My origin of origin is coming from uh, uh, the uh, the writer Hannah Arendt. Um, she's a Jewish uh, philosopher uh, during World War II. And then she witnessed Nazi occupations. And uh, she uh, witnessed a uh, 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 trial of uh, SS uh, uh, person in uh, is then she sort of uh, described the evil that she she witnessed, which is not like you know very like typical evil stuff, but more mundane, um, governmental, um, kind of like uh, you know um, very day to day, -to -day uh, you know small increments of uh, evilness, and uh, I wanted to sort of shine a light on that. Uh, fact because we all kind of like uh is drawn to it if the situation allows itself and uh mm -hmm. i certainly was um sort of worried about myself uh working in the industry especially as an artist uh you get to work on some stuff that you don't know uh if you were in well, what part of you know uh role you're playing on uh, some sort of project and uh i pictured myself to be um you know i i don't really want to do some bad things <laughs> so uh i wanted to shine light on that and so it's my uh my reflection is in the, the character of the movie and the struggle uh of her through this uh city so if I'm hearing this right, a big part of it is that uh, cultural and ethnicity uh, mm -hmm. conflict that takes place in pretty much any society. Yeah, yeah. And uh, okay. I, I shine on on Japan specifically because Japan has a huge uh, elderly population. Um, and so the city has um, a very dark theme uh, against the elderly population of the city. And, um, uh, you know, um, the, the Japan the society it has a it's sort of problem of the generation winding down and have a lot of elderly people and do thinking about um how to sustain the 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 economy through that um so okay. there was definitely uh that aspect and we you know as a society we talked about how the society can keep living with a lot of elderly population um so that that has uh, some uh, uh, effect in the 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 writing I did on this film. Okay, I was going to say from what you're telling me is a lot of the conversation I heard about your film at FilmQuest was uh, they didn't really 
I guess it didn't really catch on to them as much about the intern camps, mm -hmm. but definitely the cultural aspects of the elderly and mm -hmm. fitting into a society. So yeah. there's a lot there. Mm -hmm. So we were talking before we started here, and you said that there's possible plans of turning this into a full-length feature. Can you tell us a little bit more about what, you, what you're looking at, what, what ideas are cropping up? Yes. So um, I wasn't really trying to make this into some bigger things. I had this idea to make it and I made it spent my past seven years to make. So uh, I wasn't really, uh, I was sort of exhausted from it. Uh, but driving to Utah uh, from LA 10 hours, I have a lot of time to think about what to do. And I had, I think I kind of sort of cracked the idea on how I want to uh, make this a uh, bigger uh, things so um I, right now i'm trying to um outline and write a longer future version of this uh, uh this 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 story uh with more characters and and sort of revolving around this world that i created um so hope to make it something in the future um so that's my next next big project that's your next big project that you're working on is that one yeah. So you don't yeah. have anything uh, in the works right now between submitting and the feature? I have another project uh, idea that I, I'm thinking about, and I'm primary editor, so I have other projects that uh, the people want me to edit. So there's always stuff going on, you know, like like everybody else in this industry, you know, there's multiple projects that you got to keep working on. But this has been my passion project for past seven years, and and looks like I have more plans on this. So I'm going to keep working on it and then try to some, make something um, more, much uh, bigger impact, hopefully. Okay, so we had the opportunity of seeing Submitten on the film festival circuit. So right now, what is the future for your short film? So this short film uh, is the at the end of the film festival, and and then so the folks at the Dust, uh, the USD Dust uh, streaming network, they uh, they decided to pick it up. So uh, we're gonna start uh, streaming this short film on dust on youtubes and other you know uh other places uh you know uh i, I don't know how, how he does different distributions right now so um but that's if you go to dust or if you go to youtube channel on dust uh you can start watching this in 2023 in january end of january we'll we'll start uh this streaming it so anybody can watch free um after uh, watching this interview. All right. So that will give them a chance on all sorts of different platforms between what Dust does. So that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty exciting. Yep. Um, so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, kind of a more personal basis as you as a filmmaker. Is that all right? Sure. Yeah, of course. Okay. So let me ask you, this is one that I find kind of interesting that I've had talked to people and they really like is for you personally, can you tell us a movie or multiple movies that had a big impact on you as a filmmaker? wanting to go into filmmaking or just as a person and uh, what was that impact that it had on you wow okay i mean <laughs> i can count hundreds uh yeah. but i'll start with the first one uh uh, uh the my first viewing of the untouchables in 1987 88 i was like junior high school uh, I didn't know what, what what I wanted to do, um, and uh, you know, at the time there was a video rental like blockbusters, right, in the mm -hmm. United States. I ha we had the same thing in Japan, and I bor borrowed the um, video copy of the Untouchables, and I I I really really loved it. And I told my mom, I'm like, what's this? And she said, oh, it's a movie. And then so and and then I realized there's a career on making these things. And I realized, oh, okay, I want to uh, be, you know, I want to be making something like this. So that started my whole career. Um, and uh, ultimately to come to the United States to study films and keep working on films is it's because of that one film. And uh, yeah, I mean, I get, there's hundreds of different ones too, but that okay. was the very first one. That was the first one. So you took a jump from a period piece of The Untouchables with Kevin Costner. Mm -hmm. and, and jumped into a 
a dystopian science fiction type city. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The trajectory of that is like I don't know what, what happened between them, but like, yeah, I just like good movies, like with really great stories and great script and great actors. So, um, and uh, I just really want to make something really, really like good, like you know, from the beginning to this to the end like you were invested in characters and you go into the journey with them so i definitely that was my goal was to make really really good story and really good film uh in, in general basically yeah okay so that's how you got your start in filmmaking and kind of your drive now that you've gone through that whole process of learning how to make films and you got this one out and it's getting distributed to a new person that wants to get to become a filmmaker, what piece of advice would you give them? Uh, uh, just make them, I guess. Uh, don't wait till somebody else to make your movie. Um, I so I I so I watched the Untouchables in thirteen when I was like thirteen, fourteen. I waited until college to do something, uh, because I just wanted to sort of come to the United States and do it. So I sort of waited all these like four or five, five, five years during that time to really not doing anything. I sort of like waited until uh, my, you know, you know, visit to the United States to be that. And I feel like right now, looking back on it, those five years or whatever, like when Spielberg is like having H high eight and super eight and shooting those films, I didn't do any of that. And I feel like I, I wish I, I wish I did some of those things. So like if you, I mean, at, you know, at, 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 at any age these days with cell phones and everything, you can do what it, whatever you want to do with it um you just need to know the limitations but limitations make you much more creative so i would just try to you know do it find you know like-minded folks to do it and have fun with it and just keep keep doing it, you know repeating I, I, that's essentially what i'm doing anyways it's like I, i'm not doing anything different for three from what i just said it's basically let's just keep making your own stuff and you know there's a people out there who is like you and and you know people like film quest like these people that i didn't really know until you know submitting to those film festivals like oh yeah these people are like you know like me it's like people just wanted to do do cool stuff and just keep doing it so yeah uh it you just do it put it out there and you know find folks to you know, collaborate and then just keep repeating, 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 and and something will come come eventually. I think. Okay. Hey, thank you, Susumu. I yep. think this has been a great little talk. I look forward to the opportunity, of maybe watching Submit again, especially since you're saying it's coming out on Dust, uh, starting the end of dis or end of January, January almost January. December, and we're that's where we are almost. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> so basically, the <laughs> end of next month. <laughs> yep. So. Uh, I wish you a lot of luck on that, and I hopefully will see you again at the festivals. Thank you very much, and happy holidays. Thank you, Daniel. And okay. Thank you, everyone. All right. All right.